What up, what up, what up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with No Labels Necessary Podcast, episode number 43. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday, dropping full episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream your podcast, chopping it up about music, making money, making content. Because that's what we do, y'all. That's what we do. Now, the topic that we're starting with today, All right. what if these social media platforms no longer existed? What would you do? Because a lot of people say, man, I shouldn't get on that platform if it didn't, it, because it's probably not going to be around for that long. It'll be gone. We know TikTok is about to get banned. Well, we have a clip by a guy by the name of Abu Fofana. I don't know what he does honestly but i love this clip so y'all can check him out but listen to this clip other thing is i don't think it's going to happen quick enough right so let's say it happens 10 years from now but in 10 years you made 30 million from these platforms you've got 30 million right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're, you're all right people always tell me that all the time with the food 90 percent of your business is driven through ads what if ads stop them? well you know I'd, I'd have a few million dollars so i'm, I'm okay <laughs> so, <laughs> Learn to pivot with the market, right? Before advertising, I had to figure out ways to sell, and I, and I offended, and I created a partnership. So you, you adapt, you adapt. That right there. Again, people always ask us, hey, is TikTok about to be banned? Should I even start? All right? This platform, is it going to work? Or that thing, is it going to be around for long enough? Take advantage of the moment. Yeah. You don't know anything about any of these platforms, how long they'll be around, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. I think everybody wants to be stuck in predictor stage and not want to take any action at all without it being the right action. Like, I want to be right about whether it's YouTube. I want to be right whether it's TikTok or whatever. What's the long game? Because I don't want to waste any energy. But honestly, you can't win like that. That's an entitled way to go about things. Yeah. Like, you know, the people who say, oh, yeah, I work hard. I just have to be working on the right thing. I don't want to work hard on the wrong thing. A conditional hard worker. A conditional hard worker. I love that. Them conditional hard workers out there. Look, I get the theory. I don't want to work hard on some shit that doesn't have lasting value either. Right? But the way this thing really works, reality is we never know. So you're going to have to be able to do that work anyway. And if anything, you build the muscle. Perfect example. Gary Vee always talks about how he was popping on YouTube a little bit back in like probably like 2008, just early YouTube days, mm -hmm. right? And then he left to be on some platform. I think he said it was like VidIQ or Vidler. Oh, Vidler, yeah, I think yeah. it's called, right? Yeah. Because he was investing in it, which makes sense. So I want to be on here and go hard on here. And then it failed. So he lost his YouTube following and traction. However, he was going hard. He already had that muscle. We already know what Gary Vee is doing today. Going crazy in all these platforms, right? So, yes, you might have a detour, but as long as you build the muscle, you're always going to be able to get back to whatever you need to get back to. Yeah, and like, and the end results are things that translate whether or not the platform dies, right? So, like, he, he brought up the point of, you know, um, not needing ads to do certain things because we have these other structures built. If you grow your email list with a dying platform, the email list is still viable, right? You were still able to milk whatever benefits you could get from it. Really good examples are like all those like binders, you know what I'm saying, who today have active YouTube channels and TikTok accounts yep. and things. The platform they built their audience on no longer exists, but those people are real people. They're still out in the world. You use another platform, so when they, they jump ship, they're able to find these people a lot more easier, right? And so what I say to a binder, like, hey, like all that shit you did in 2013 was a complete waste of your time. The platform doesn't exist. And no, it's like, look at the audience that it's giving you to be able to flip. Huh? long beyond, you know what I'm saying, the, the lifespan of the actual platform. So that's how I look at it is like, you know, like you said, there's, you're very rarely going to have enough information on if you really know if a platform is going to be here or not. It's all speculative. But like I said, if you're doing the actions to produce like real results from it, you know, the, the hard, tangible stuff, the emails, the phone numbers, the, the, the brand awareness and to the right audience, and shit, it really don't matter, man. You just ride the trains as they come. You know what I'm saying? Like, just hopping yeah. off when that shit's done and, and waiting for the next one and, and, and <laughs> rinse and repeat. F facts. Because, <laughs> look, like he said, hey, I made $2 million in that time. Yeah, exactly. I made $30 million in that time. It's not that you don't want to pay attention to doing something sustainable and 
mitigate their risk. We're not saying that at all, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's like even you talking about, well, still taking you know, phone numbers, emails, and things like that to help create insurance. But the ideal position, especially, is when you get yourself in a position where you have your main business, you have your consistent systems, but then on top of that, you can ride each wave that comes. Yep. All right, so you can maximize because those are going to be mo moments that come. Think about people who are making masks. They were already doing their thing in the mask make making business, but shit, the <laughs> pandemic came, running up the numbers. Now I'm sure the numbers aren't as high as they were. They probably still higher than they were pre pandemic in terms of needing needs for masks. Yeah. So now they already had the systems. They rolled the wave. They got the extra money, but then they just returned to business as usual. Yeah. Same for what hand sanitizer <laughs> stuff like that. Everybody started making hand sanitizer out of nowhere. But even the mask, bro. I had never seen a stylish face mask until the, the, the no the pandemic hit. Exactly. No, exactly. They still out here. Which I don't know, random thought because we never like had it like talk about any of these related topics before. I wonder if we gonna get like that strike that people. I, I, that's why I hesitated about I was thinking. I was like, but I couldn't think of a better word to say. We're just leaving pandemic though. We won't go into those other related words. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start calling it David. <laughs> but for real though, like that, I think that's something that people overthink, right? And that's what keeps you from taking action. There's already a lot of different things to think about in the creative, the format, et cetera. Um, the song, the production, if you overthink trying a platform, it's to your detriment. Like just, just try it, go hard at it. If anything, you still got content that you can put in other platforms. Let's say if TikTok took a, um, you know, stop popping. Well, hey, look, at least you can move that content, do compilations with it on YouTube, right? You can put it on Reels. There's other places you can put that content on. And you still built the muscle of being able to do it while there's somebody else who didn't start at all. So when a moment comes, they can't take advantage of it because they don't have a muscle. Now they're like, oh, here's the right wave. And you never are going to know. So, yeah, what what if platforms, social platforms never exist? Yes, they're going to ebb and flow. We've seen it happen before. We haven't seen a big fall of a, a social platform in a while, though. Either. Yeah, man. Yeah, Vine might have been the last big one we like watched yeah. fall. Yeah, that was the, yeah. the last big one that I can think of. But it's something like that's going to happen again, and that's a part of entrepreneurship. Yeah, right. And we know artists try to separate themselves from that word a lot of times, or try to take on that title without then taking on the realities of what that title means. All right, but all of us in music, especially naturally have to be entrepreneurs because of the trending culture that we are in. Yeah, bro, that's right? it. That's it. Come and go. Come and go. Come and go. So about platforms in general, the cultural moments that happen over and over again. You look at Drake. He's always done that perfectly. He built the Drake audience, the sustainable system of Drake audience and Drake voice. And then we always talk about how he hops on trends and uses it to get extra visibility. But he's still his same core Drake. It's the same concept that we're talking about. So, oh, yeah, what if Afrobeast isn't trending forever? What if, um, I don't know, well, what would we call that trend? You know, when Drum made that sound? Like, um, I mean, made Cha-Cha, and then, yeah. and then uh, Drake made... Kyle I'm Bling. Kyle I'm Bling. Yeah. Finesse music? If he would buy it. <laughs> I don't know. They were trying to make it seem like that was going to be a sound direction for a second. Yeah. Right? Whatever. It's like, you never know. But as long as you win, there's people... The disco era that are legends. The disco era really only lasted like I'll look it up. Like a couple years, bro. That was crazy. It it's, yeah, it's crazy that it came and left that. Let me see. Yeah, but it left such a big impact. Exactly. You know what I'm like, and people made money. Shoot. How long did disco last? Seventies disco was born. Valentine's Day. Like, nah, that sounds wild. I don't believe that. That's too specific. <laughs> it was born on Valentine's Day in nineteen seventy. Seven. <laughs> And then and it rapidly faded in 1980. So they want to say it's a, it's a decade and a meet day it peaked and and died. So people just start hating on it. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Almost, it was predominantly white, heterosexual, urban, and suburban middle class, but it didn't begin that way. That's why it peaked. Ah, yeah, it hit. That sounds like a whole other conversation. It hit mainstream. That's you know what I'm saying. Stop being niche. The people <laughs> wanted to get off the bandwagon. Yeah. That is interesting. Fun fact about the disco. I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't sound wild to be that spe specific. 
Valentine's Day of 1970. I want to go find the origin story, but that's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we can actually move off on that one because I got a whole other set of thoughts, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. We got some other information. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Oh, it's the big one. Instagram. Uh -huh. Instagram wants to stop paying content creators. Is that a surprise? And by the way, technically it's meta. Meta. It's hard for me to say that whole meta thing. Yeah, I'm not for it. But meta isn't paying influencers for reels anymore. Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's company has put a lot of emphasis on short form videos, giving creators thousands of dollars for bounties on reels view counts. No more. We're not paying y'all for posting on our platform and getting views. Corey, what you think about this? It's terrible, man. It's terrible because one, just personally, man, I was you know prepared to, to, to ramp my Instagram up for the, the extra bag. You know, ain't nothing crazy, but you know, that's... tell them how much you were getting, man. How much I was getting? Yeah. I mean, like low end. So the most I've ever made from it was like twelve hundred. Low end I get like four or five hundred. In a month time? Yeah. Cause mine capped, which is what's crazy about this, because I actually want to get in that. Mine capped at twelve hundred a month. It used to cap it at like eighteen hundred a month or maybe fifteen, eighteen, and then they lowered it. It's be like fifteen hundred for every like one point two million views. One that they lowered it to twelve hundred per and I'm like, oh that's you know, that's whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's only three hundred dollars. I wasn't going hard enough to It'd be hitting that consistently anyway. I haven't been posting like crazy on, on on Instagram. But then I learned through this that there were some creators that Instagram was making back end deals with and they was making like thirty K a month, fifty K a month, you know what I'm saying? A couple thousand. So now I'm just like, damn, I wasn't pushing it hard enough <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to to break that barrier. But I was getting ready to. You know what I'm saying? Thanks to this podcast and things like that. Like the the content was there for me to wrap it up, you know? And and now we can. So the other thing that kind of hurt with us personally is you know this was just like two months ago when we talked about reworking one of our marketing strategies to include content pay you know what I'm saying? as a as a as a return on investment that's like a third of the equation going right there you know what i'm saying like <laughs> hey man look we all get hit with that <laughs> like we are the same boat of y'all as y'all when it comes to this because when youtube got stricter uh, yeah. back in january we literally saw the money we were making off of YouTube videos cut in half, Drop, like literally cut in half. I heard people say stuff like, oh, man, my money got cut in half. When you actually there, you see it get cut in half for real to a three. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, dang, he went out, went, went, uh, got cut in half, but he was doing crazy numbers. Ours would probably get cut maybe 20%, 30%. You know. But, that, but that's, the, that's the thing, though, bro. At least YouTube, at least YouTube came with like, excuse not even just excuse like band-aids, right? Like, hey, hey, Sean, we about to cut this shit fifty percent, but hey, we are gonna give you more robust analytics. We gonna give you, <laughs> we gonna give you, uh, YouTube shorts traffic. We gonna give you the the the, the subscription buttons and shit. YouTube came with peace offerings. Instagram just came with an announcement. <laughs> there was no significant life of uh, quality of life changes that came with it. There was like no. Hey, we're not giving you money over here, but you can come make money over here. Like none of that, bro. Just was like, hey, we ain't paying you no more. Fuck you, gonna go. We about to get TikTok out of here because I don't know if everybody knows this, but Meta is the biggest lobbyer right now to get TikTok out of here. They they putting up money, they putting up resources, they talking to politicians. They are using they they throwing all their weight around, man. And that to me is why I think it's a bad move. I feel like it's a bad move to be like, hey, everybody, let's gang up on this platform that is trying to pay you 
while we simultaneously tell you we're not about to pay you. Like, that feels like a move they should have pulled after they, they won over public support, you know? Because now the creators are going to be like, no, nah, fuck y'all. I'm going to TikTok still paying me. And at the very least, if y'all shut down TikTok, then we are just going to YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just feel like it was a bad move. They, they could have they pulled this trigger a lot later, you know? Maybe like, you know, maybe like March, April, you know what I'm saying? Like, but. But it's still there. Like, I looked at my analytics, and I still have the ability to get my bonuses for this month. So, I actually, you know, I'm about to go hard with the rest of this March, you know, get the last little bit that I can. Because I'm assuming, like, next month is going to be gone completely, you know. <sighs> I'm assuming sometime between next month and, like, top of June is out here. See, I got different thoughts about this. Because, so this Milan... Core Destiny person said in the comments, imagine if Spotify said they'd stop paying artists for their music, if YouTube stopped paying creators for their videos. What else did they say? It's a little bit more. Oh, nothing else. Oh, meta profiting off of creators without micropayments is beyond exploitive. See, see that's the other thing, man. Like, the, the move feels, it makes meta feel behind the times. Like, that person said, at this point, you know, like micro content payments were like innovative, like like that's three I'm years saying. ago. Now it's almost like there's a precedent. Yeah, exactly. We already know that y'all are used to doing this, and y'all will do this without payment. Yeah. So why would we not go back to that? That makes it easier for it. But what I'm saying, but as a consumer, it's like, but I haven't had to think about not a consumer as a creator. It's like I haven't even had to think about that for the last two, three years. So now, now it's a precedent on the other side. You know what I'm saying? See, <laughs> like, right, this is <laughs> what I think about this man. Let me. Let's look up this news about the fun that they had. Instagram starts paying content creators. Let's Google this. All right. With monetization products, you will be paid once you earned at least $25 for charities. No, no. How to make money. See, it's older news now. Oh, uh, let's see. Starts. Let's call it a creator fund. And find the news. Instagram offers creators up to thirty-five thousand dollars. Facebook and Instagram launches one billion dollar creator fund. This, this is what I think people are missing. You think the fund is up? Exactly. <laughs> it's a one billion dollar fund. It's not a new initiative to be ongoing in the future. The funds are gone. We gave y'all this money so we can incentivize y'all to do what we wanted y'all to do. Now that y'all have done it, y'all have went crazy on reels, and y'all seem to be hooked on reels, we can back off because the money's gone anyway. We did what we promised. And now we're moving on like Deion Sanders from Jackson State. Because I, I, I served the purpose <laughs> that I stated I was going to serve, bro. And now we're on to, to the next. That's what I think. And you look at all these communications when these things come out. TikTok will pull the same thing. Everybody says fund. Most of these people are talking about funds. Yeah. So there's an end date or an end amount. Yeah. That part, I think, like, whether you want to say that was strategic in the front end or they just happen to be done is what I feel like people are missing. So maybe some people just got hooked for the long term, having long term expectations when maybe they weren't as merited. They got sold and dream. I don't like, again, Jackson State, the I Sanders, people kind of felt like oh, we have this for ourselves for a long term and it wasn't a long term relationship. You got a little bit too excited, right? So here I think they that the fun is up. One, the mission is complete. Two, in terms of hey, yeah, people are hooked on reels. Like people are are using it. So what else what else do we need to do? They're probably going to try to fund at some point some other type of initiative as well. But they had to at this point, too. Remember, because TikTok was killing them. Yeah. We had to get people up on, on our stuff. So there's that. There's that. And with that being said, does it, does it suck? Yeah. But it's weird because you had to opt into it in a way that wasn't organic. Like even, I still feel the same way about TikTok. I don't think short form, short form content monetization really makes a lot of sense yet. And I haven't seen all the data and I'm not talking about for the content creator, but I feel like even just from the companies and like the entire system as a whole, I think it's not quite figured out probably yet. Mm -hmm. Economically, where it just makes sense. The long form and YouTube 
seems like they've kind of like mapped that out. And Facebook, I think they're still paying for, um, what is it? Is it is it Facebook TV? What is it called? I haven't even heard about it, man. Is it that long form thing? Yeah, well, where, yeah. where um, Steve Harvey show and Jada Pinkett's Red t Table Talk, whatever that system. Yeah. But they're selective about who yeah. can be a part of that, right? So I think because of TV and all these other formats that have existed before, long form uh, like monetization and advertising makes a lot of sense and there's more precedent. And it don't seem like anybody really gets it with, with TikTok. But even the people I know who have been doing it on TikTok in the fun, they're like, eh. It's not crazy. Yeah, it's not crazy. <laughs> and a lot of people are opting out after they get in because it's not worth it. So that's another thing. So I don't want to be all evil on, on Facebook from stopping it. I think it's just something that's not figured out yet. And I'll, I'll give them a little bit of grace because uh, now kind of thinking about it out loud. Remember like a week ago I showed you that they're now testing out like ads in between posts on people's feed. Remember, like if you go, like if you go to somebody's Instagram yeah, profile yeah. and you scroll through their content, eventually an ad is gonna come up, which is crazy. So I'm assuming that's still gonna be their way to like pay you for like you know ad share for like views on your content, technically, right? Like now your content feed acts as like a like a an advertising feed. They rolled out the subscription thing a couple months ago, and um, they removed the shopping tab on the Explore page, which I was telling you about yesterday, but I did a bit more research on it. And they took it out the Explore page, but now there are some accounts where you have, like, a shop at the top of your, your um, profile, like, you know, right where your edit profile and, like, you know, contact and shit is. There's a shop button now. Uh, so I'm like, okay, what I think is happening is that Instagram, like all the other platforms, are trying to figure out how can we not pay you money and how can we just get your audience to pay you money so you don't care that we're not paying you money, right? And so I think they were looking at like, hey, man, no one's really trying to figure out how to use subscription or the shop because all you motherfuckers are just running for the reels bonus, you know what I'm saying? Because the reels bonus is the low-hanging fruit, bro. I got this content I was making anyway. Like I said, I was prepared to run. I'm like, we got this podcast, you know what I'm saying? Me and Sean knocking out four or five hours of content a week because of this shit. That's easy, bro. I mean, that's about to be the easiest $1,500 a month. I don't ever make, you know what I'm saying? But there's no incentive for me to go really figure out subscriptions and shop because that shit is work. And it's not like, you know, there's, it's, it's not, it's not, there aren't too many templates out there right now to follow. Yeah. So I also think this might be Instagram's way of saying like, hey man, y'all ain't moving fast enough on figuring that shit out and, and making money off of, your audience, y'all still waiting on us to pay you, and we don't like that. So let's just yoink this shit off. You know, now you ain't got no choice. So either, hey, you you come to Instagram and you post for free. But like I said, I think they probably will start paying at revenue because of the ads in between your posts. But you know, it's probably not gonna be nothing crazy. So, um, so I was like, hey, you can come, you know, send do shit for either for free, you know, or you figure out these other features that we give you, and you make your money back that way. And actually, now that I said out loud, the paying for views through the feed. It's also like I think less acceptable to like botting and shit. You can like bot a reel and get it to a million views, but it's hard to fake like profile engagement. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a very hard thing. It's a very hard thing to fake. So I'm on their side. They're probably like, hey, even the money we pay out is is gonna be a lot more at least organically based. We you know you know you can only finesse us so much here. You know, versus like on the reels, like you know you got your you know your algo boosting hacks and shit. If you can do that. Hey, we was only planning to give you a hundred dollars for that video. You don't make that shit go viral, and then we owe you five bands. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shit is crazy for them. So that's what I think is happening: is they're forcing us as creators to figure out the other features a lot faster than any of us probably thought we would have to. Because I, I had no intentions to figure out the subscription thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I it wasn't. I was like, no, why would I do that? I got reels. I just post the shit I'm already posting. You know? Before we even move on to the <laughs> next topic, what do you think about subscriptions? I think that they're not clearly defined. I personally have not come across a creator yet that has made me feel like paying for subscriptions on their platform. And I follow some pretty cool creators from all different types of niches and industries. And I remember I did a live one day and I had maybe like 20, 30 people in the live and I asked them, like, hey, did any of y'all like subscribe to people on Instagram? And all of them said no. No, no, I, there was not one person in there who subscribed to someone. Said, no, all if if y'all subscribe, the people who are watching on YouTube, to anybody on Instagram, please put it in the comments and also say who it is and why. Yeah, who and why, because I need to know. Because, yeah, I've been, and like, I've, I made some, like, test offers to see how people would, you know, respond to it. 
but it was more the response of like, oh, you know, subscriptions? No, I know I bought or anything, you know. Um, and I, like I said, I haven't seen good examples of it yet. And I think that's a large part of the reason of why so many creators aren't using Like, we, we don't know who to look at to figure out where to start moving in. You know what I'm saying? It's like, do we look at the way subscriptions work on Patreon and use that model? But it's like, uh, Instagram is different. It's not like everybody is here. Like, Patreon is different because you go to Patreon with the mentality of like, hey, I might have to give this person money. You don't go to anyone's Instagram account with that mentality. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think it's different there. Um, I like a lot. And I think it's them trying to compete with YouTube, but even YouTube feels a lot more natural because it's like they put it on the bottom of the content. Hey, you like this shit? Go buy a, a super subscription or whatever it's called, right? Versus like Instagram is kind of like there. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't feel like they are doing a good job at publicizing it to regular consumers to make it look like something they should be doing, and they're putting the pressure on creators to figure out how to make it attractive. I'd agree with that. There's no culture for it. YouTube, there's a culture. If you're on there enough, you know that there's a lot of people who have subscribers. And there's a lot of people who tip nor regularly if they're doing streams and things like that. So there's some type of feedback culture there. Instagram, there is no on-platform um, like regular engagement, transactional relationship. Unless you go live a lot and most creators ain't. They're not just they're not like live streaming. Who's doing that regularly on Instagram? That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're that type of person, you go on Twitch or YouTube. <laughs> like, if you are the person that could live stream four or five hours a day, you're not doing it on Instagram. You go on Twitch or YouTube. Because even, like, the badge thing on lives is, like, cool. Like, I get, you know, appreciate all of you that donate whenever I do lives. It's, you know, it helps. Um, but if I was seriously trying to do it, I wouldn't do it on Instagram. I would definitely go Twitch or YouTube. Because I know, the, like you said, the payout is going to be much bigger on both of them over probably over the same amount of effort you know um especially assuming since we already have an audience it's not like it'd be crazy like ground zero build up mm -hmm. and so yeah that's why i said like, i don't think they're doing enough to incentivize creators to want to use it or to uh, influence consumers to want to use it the same way other platforms like when tiktok introduced that whole like sticker donation shit for their credit but that shit was everywhere like it was all over the home page support your new favorite creators with blah 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 blah, blah and send them a fun donut or some shit to let them know you like them when youtube did it they rolled that shot they had how-to videos all over youtube on how to use it and donate to that like it was pushing it hard like making sure like hey not only do you as are you as creators um you know need to be using this but hey you as consumers should also be looking to use these things and use it to support their credit instagram hasn't really done that you know what i'm saying yeah um, and then, like I said, they're not building a, like the culture of donation has never really been there. It's gotten better over the last two years, but like, I don't still think, I, I still don't think people have a donation mindset when they're on Instagram. Like that kind of turns on when you're on YouTube. It kind of turns on when you're on TikTok is really on when you're on Twitch. Cause that's the whole thing. But like Instagram hasn't done great. The greatest at building donation culture. You know what I'm saying? Do you have a lot of relationship with your Instagram? audience yeah my instagram always fuck me do you have people on instagram that you feel like you have a deep relationship with from a fan standpoint yeah yeah i got some ogs from day one okay the reason i'm asking is because we know youtube has a deeper relationship in general when you're watching people's content like once you're getting people's content like you can really opt into just watching them for a period of time. There's yeah. longer form content where Instagram can be privy to just more of a casual scroll. Yeah. All right. And you're always like fighting other types of content. TikTok's kind of like that as well. Yeah. I think that's why there's a difficulty in like subscribing. Because if I just go on right. to your world on, it's hard for me to go into your world on Instagram. Yeah. I might opt in and watch live. And like continue to see your posts and like fuck with you in that way, but now I get distracted if I just like say I just want to watch Corey shit. You know, sure. it's easier to do that on the the longer form platforms. I feel like that's partially something to do with it. Um, but you know, we'd have to continue to experiment and see how stuff evolves. They're trying to turn this into OnlyFans credits, bro. That's what they're trying to do, right? I see people already got places and spaces for that. I'm saying, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they, they 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 had an opportunity to do that early on they should have taken that early on when uh what's his name started 
Patreon started. Oh yeah. Like it was more natural for people to do that kind of stuff through Instagram and YouTube, but they all kind of like looked at that as and eh. YouTube is just special good though. And figuring out a way to get in when they fit in. Like it's crazy. They can be early or late to something. They figure out how to make stuff work at a higher rate than most other platforms. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube is goat for that. But transitioning to another topic I think is highly interesting. Key Glock says he stopped asking for features after he offered an artist one million dollars and got no response. That's crazy. That, that's a wild a million dollar dub. A million dollar dub. We all you know, we're gonna speculate on the, who that might be, but let's listen to the clip of him talking about it. The man. He gave me about you know, me two people. I was like, all right, the, the one other person I know for sure is going he's gonna to go through the roof just because of who he is and his fan base and the machine he got behind him. So I'm like, don't just ask why I was like, uh. By the way, this is him saying the song that I blew up with. So it already had hella traction. This isn't just randomly asking for a future. This is a song that already became relevant in its niche. Yeah. You know? So it's not just like, oh, the music's trash and I'm at, I'm offering you a lot of money. This is a bona fide opportunity even for the artist itself. Kind of, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean about yeah. Opportunity, right? Yeah. This could go for both of us. This could go and be a good look for both of us, especially when you got a million in your pocket. But he said, all right, don't just ask him. I was like, this offering him something. So, I offered, I offered him a million dollars, literally, a million dollars, a million dollars. Before I even physically had it all, I was going, hey, I'm taking this whole million, just go and give it to him. Because you, you knew what it was worth. Exactly. But after so long, like I said, I don't, I don't know the reason why, it, like, they never said no or never said they didn't want to do it. My first... All right. Offered the artist one million dollars. The artist never even gave energy back. Never even responded. Who do you think that could have been? Did you ever say which song it was? It was a song that blew him up. I can't remember what song that was, but he made it seem like, and I don't know, it might have been the first song that buzzed him. Yeah. It might not have been the one that blew him, blew him up. So I wish I knew, actually. But you know it was an early on song. Yeah. Okay. So, cause my first guess was gonna be Lil Baby, but I think Key Glock and Lil Baby might have been starting to buzz around the same time. Maybe I don't. Really, I don't have something. My next guess is Future. Your next guess is Future. Yeah, the only reason I think Future is because I remember this clip of Meg The Stallion talking about how she had to pay Future like a quarter million for a feature or something like that. Yep. So I know Future's already within the, the realm of prices where. And artist that doesn't know his price might think he would want that much, you know what I'm saying? Or cost that much. So and then my next guess would be Drake. See, <laughs> I don't think it's Drake yeah. because it made it seem like the niche was right and was perfect. And it would, I think at some point he even said like it'd be good to his fan base, my fan base, something like that. Drake isn't really like he's a a steroid, right? It'll add some acceleration onto the track, but that's not his fan base isn't necessarily key lock. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't say that. All right. Drake or Lil Baby. You see some people saying that. Folks gotta learn. Oh, let me let me take a moment to say this. Someone in the comment section said, Folks gotta learn how to not take rejection personally. Now you stop asking other people just because one person didn't work out. Mm. Ah. <sighs> That next collab with somebody else might have the biggest impact, but you'll never know because you let another artist action give you a head. Yeah, well, that's saying that's big. They spin. You don't like that comment. You don't hit it with the heart. <laughs> I got you. I'm, 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 I'm going to give him the like. <laughs> Push it, Corey. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like a lot of times people just feel like someone's being emotional and are, are more worried about something than they are. And it might not even be that deep for them. He might just be like, I'm just keep going out. It might not be so tried and emotional. I don't know. That shit deep because he ain't put no features on his album. Man, he brags about it. Man, it's a part of his whole name. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You take it and you flip it. <laughs> and now I'm flipping it. I'm using this. Why do I need to even worry about that? I like that. I feel that, man. Because artists will do that, bro. Artists will be like, man, like, I don't know, man. That one dude scammed me for like $50. I'll never work with another marketer again. 
Okay. Like what? Like what? Man, I held this one artist one time for a feature. He said he was going to bed. It was nine o'clock. I ain't working with these niggas no more ever again. He's like, bro, what are you talking about? Did he not? <laughs> he got songs with dope. That, 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 they could look at family and all. Okay. Help. So he might just be like, I don't want to play the industry game. I want to build the way I want to build. There's no difference than artists saying, I don't want to have a label. You're right, but. I don't want to play the industry game. And I'll only do stuff with people that I probably have a deeper relationship. I'm not about to just go shop and throw money at people. I'm going to focus on my. Yeah, and that's what I've realized. Like, most artists are exactly like that. Hey, if it organically happens. If I happen to be at the studio one day and and, and Future happens to walk past my session, like, oh, this shit sound fire. What is that? And I'll hop, and I'll hop on. That's the only situation I'll take. And it's like, no, bro. This shit sometimes is sales. And no, yeah, I'm glad you said and the hard thing about sales is sometimes you got to cold pitch yourself to a motherfucker that don't care about you. I'm glad you said that <laughs> because I was about to say a lot of artists are like, I'm not a salesman. I'm going to go back to this, this being creative thing because yeah. that's a different mode. I don't want to be a salesman. That's exactly what that is when you don't have a relationship. So what you can do best is more so have an A&R. Put some stuff together, like or or a certain person on your team and manager who works on being bringing all that. But you as the artist putting your energy into doing that a lot, I don't even think that works anyway. Yeah, Long term, he's like Khaled, do it. All right, would you? Are you trying to set? Are you trying to throw a setup out here? Use a DJ Khaled? Are you trying to put him in a lot of fire? I'm just saying, man, he do it. You know People don't look at him; they don't respect DJ DJ Khaled's artist. I feel like Lil Wayne do it. Lil Wayne do what? I feel like Lil Wayne tells the artist he wants to work with that he's the one that likes them. I feel like he's doing that. I don't think it's a team of people. Because the way the other artists talk about being blessed from the other side, it be sounding like he reached out to them. Yeah. yeah so I feel like he do it. That's not selling. That's giving. That's blessing. I'm, I'm Lil Wayne. I'm a... And I'm going to bless you at this moment. <laughs> you can turn it down, but it's probably not going to be turned out. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's like, I think it was it not. I don't think it was Young Blue. It was somebody turned, oh, I think Rod Wave turned down a, Bri a Drake. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did talk oh. about it, yeah. Because it really didn't work. But generally speaking, if it works and it goes, most people are going to say, yes. They could have made that work. Say, hey, how be feeling, man? You got, you are, you made that work, bro. You got like 50 songs made. Probably more than that. You don't fit on none of these. I don't believe that. Me, Drake was inspired by that. But I like, said, man, artists, man, y'all be killing me with these invisible obstacles in your head. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. No problem with that. <laughs> I'm against many of the obstacles. I feel like you can have somebody on your team to do that, though. Yeah, like, you still want to have somebody in place. I don't want to say don't stop, don't ever look for features again. But because you gotta think, his background, he's more from the hustle background, where they are the ones who are doing huh. that. Into their rapper mentality, right? Yeah. So instead of me being the hustle to actually, because a lot of artists never would have made that outreach anyway. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. So he like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to me and mine. Oops. Pay attention to my block. And then if something goes, it's going to go because I could win however I win it. And he had Dolph. So that's different. Wayne, again, he's out here blessing people. He's not asking people. There could be some arguments made for that. Because he's trying. He's trying to record his podcast. podcast. I'm a little Wayne. Nah, Wayne. Exactly. But you think you're above a no? Uh, if you got a meal, <laughs> I might think about it. <laughs> Like, you think you're above rejection? <laughs> Wayne? I mean, look, the humility says yes, but the reality says, <laughs> come on, we know it's up. But, this, but that's the thing, like I said, to your point, if his mindset is, I will never reach out for a feature ever again, yeah, I'm cool with that. If the mindset is, I will never do features, try to do features ever again, no. Nah, I'm not cool. Because, bro, from, like, the only people that lose in that situation are the fans, bro. Like, I would love to hear like, like a like a Key Glock and Steve Lacey song, he probably reached out to Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey look like the type of motherfucker that don't answer respond to emails. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's off the table right there. I love to hear a a, a, a Key Glock do something with like Kanye. I love to hear Kanye drop some spiritual soul for song and then you know that surprise feature you never see coming on the song. I just you like damn is that nigga? I love for that to be Key Glock. I would love for Key Glock to be the surprise feature on some shit. But it sounds to me like. That's not going to happen because he don't want to do features no more. And as a fan, as a fan, I feel hurt. I feel personally attacked. They don't think about that, man. They don't think about the 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 
collaborations that we as fans wish would happen. And that means that we are not even a step closer to any of those happening. Call it selfish. Call it what you want. But that's how I'm looking at it. Hey, if I was an artist, I'd be like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not thinking about y'all. <laughs> not in this case. Not in I think it's hard for me to imagine it being future unless a couple circumstances, right? Because for one, future's giving the impression to me that he's about his money, like from a hustle perspective, not like, oh man, I'm super worried about this stuff being corny or da, 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 like, oh, you got the bag? All right, cool. I pull up as long as the bag is right. All right. Like Boosie's like that. All right. The bag, as long as the bag is right. It's right? like that. <laughs> oh, a meal, I know what to do with a meal. I know how hard it is to make a meal. Let me go ahead and get that, right? Now, so maybe no, nobody got to him and he never actually heard. Or, again, assuming it was future, I'm just trying to figure out how it cannot work out. I would have to imagine that futures plugged in with some folk that Gotti, not Gotti, Dolph, my bad, that Dolph and Glock that's what I meant to say, Glock. We're beefing against. And maybe he, he didn't want to play no kind of size or get into something. That's the only type of thing that I could think would keep him from doing it. If it were future. To me, I feel like it was Chief Keith. I don't know why. That's what I'm saying. It made me lean. I don't know, not because they beef. I don't think they beef him, but just, I don't know why. It made Chief Keith come up. Who was the other person? We had future. We had. I said a little baby, but I think baby. I think him a little baby was kind of coming up for us. Yeah, it so, seemed like yeah. it would make sense. I'm trying to think of what rappers in his demographic yeah, would have been like baby. further. It would have been like yeah, what I mean, a little baby. Maybe future, maybe Twenty One Savage. But I think he has a song with Twenty One Savage, so I don't think of him. Who well, maybe the baby? Um, who else been going crazy at the time in that demographic? That's all I can think of, man. I don't know. But y'all, if y'all feel like y'all might know who it is, let us know. And with that said, I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.